we've worked on double stops a bit and thinking about how to get them in tune and uh, just find them on your instrument. And we've, we've had various double stops come up in all the tunes. Um, I think we've pretty much done, maybe we haven't done sevenths, but we've done most of the double stops that you're probably gonna have happening in your fiddling. Um, but one thing that kind of builds on that is going from double stop to another double stop. Um, and if you're in the same position for that, it's just a matter of you know knowing wh where one is, knowing where the other one is, and then putting those fingers down, getting them in tune. Um, something like that that you could practice by just going back and forth. Um, but um, you might have a situation where there's one double stop in one position and another double stop in another position. And this comes up um, here and there, but often in bluegrass tunes um, or even a lick that you might want to play over a song, something like that. So to work on that, you're going to start in the same place where you're finding the initial double stop, right? So if it's that third, it's the G and the B. Usually tune your lower note first, and then tune the other one to it. Then you've got those in tune. And then we're gonna do the exercise that's a lot like when we were practicing just shifting on one finger, but now we have two fingers down. So you're gonna slide them both up and you're gonna get them into their second positions. I mean, the second place where they're gonna go, which is actually third position, because we're gonna go up to this other third. So, major third, right? That's a minor third. Um, even though we're still in the key of G major, it's just about the distance between those two notes. Like if it was another major third, it would be two whole steps, but now we have a whole step and a half step, B e and D. So because of that, these intervals are at slightly different distances from each other with your fingering. The minor third is a little wider because you're playing, I don't know, just the way it lays out. B and D. So when you're going up, you actually have to move your fingers at different rates so that they land in this spot that's a wider space. And if you practice them separately, then you'll kind of know basically where you're going. And then it's just a matter of getting it to exactly the right spot in that new position. The opposite of that would be if you're going from a minor third on the bottom, G and B flat, to a major third on the top, B flat and D. So just check that out and see how different that feels it's because the fingers start wider and then move closer together as you go up. So your top finger has to move up faster. And this obviously takes time, um, but it's kind of a fun thing to work on. Um, and it's a, it's a nice thing to have in your toolbox. And it, it even comes up in tune sometimes, like in the tune Roanoke. And that one, the one we've just been practicing is using the same fingers in each position, but you might have um, one double stop fingered one way, and then when you slide to the new position, it's a different fingering. And that's what happens in Roanoke. Sixth, D and B. 
major six. That's why the fingers aren't right next to each other. And then the minor six. So they are closer together there. B and G. And you can slide down to where those same fingers were, would go in the new position. And then switch to the new fingering. And then you do the same thing, one string over. Um, yeah. I think this this move happens in some tune. I can't think of it right now, but so yeah, just to, just some good stuff to work on, and um, getting flexible with playing different double stops in different positions. Um, another thing to think about is um, what if one note is staying the same and the other one is changing. So that would be kind of having the the independence between the fingers, so you don't have to just move them together as a block. Um. Something like that, so G on the bottom again. That's your second with the open string. And then the third, C goes down into fourth. And then you have to rotate the finger to get a fifth with the barred finger. And then pick it up. And with intonation practices, it's always really good to go super slow because that's the only way you can really hear what's happening. And also, if you're somebody that use a, is, uses a lot of vibrato, you want to take that away when you're practicing intonation, because otherwise, it's going to be masked, and you won't really be able to tell if you're playing perfectly in tune or not. You just want to hear the pure tones. Give it enough time to sink in to your brain, and then your brain will tell your fingers you need to scoot up a little or whatever. And I should, I should have better posture when I'm practicing too, because that's going to help too, you know, blood flow and all that. The fifth. to get into six. Let's go for the minor six. And back to the fifth. Actually, you probably don't even want to play along to me while you're practicing this because you want to be able to hear yourself completely. Um, but that's an idea of an exercise you could do, and you can move that all around um, anywhere you want on your instrument. It doesn't even have to start with the third, but that's kind of the one that I, I go to as my anchor because it's one of the more common double stops, and it's kind of right in the middle with your different fingers. You could also practice doing the top note being stationary and then the bottom note moving. Okay, so there's some double stop exercises for you. Let me know if you have any questions about that. <laughs>